Good morning, everyone. Well, we're back in the studio, and uh, we're having a lot of fun already. I know it's hard for you folks to believe it, but I think we enjoy the show here in the studio with Nancy and Rick and Stu and I and Jonathan. I, I really think we have as much fun, maybe more than you do. I We love being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. And uh, I started to say, even if you weren't out there listening, we'd still do the show, but I'd be lying to you. We probably wouldn't do that. Radio station wouldn't let us do it anyway. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it half as much as we do. We're here to help you learn um, a better way to buy or lease a car, uh, learn a better way to maintain or repair your car. It's a challenge today, we know that. And uh, a whole lot of stuff going on in the automotive world. Manufacturing, retailing. Of course, today with the, uh, can we call this post-COVID era? I hope so. Uh, in this post-COVID era, uh, there's just a whole lot of stuff going on. I mean, I, uh, I've been around a long time, and I can tell you I have never seen the world the way it is today. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's, uh, you know, and we've always said that because uh, I'm sure my uh, grandfather and my mm. father, everybody said, but mm. tr today it is it's, extra crazy. Uh, it is extra crazy. And uh, it's, I think I'm an optimist. I see things in a positive light. I think that we're on the road to a far better future. I know people look at it the other way, but hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I really think that, that uh, you folks out there, and I don't know whether to say you're driving automobiles because in a few years the automos automobiles will be driving you. And I know a lot of you think that's a bunch of poppycock, but I, I believe that. And uh, I think the manufacturers will be selling you cars directly uh, before much longer. And instead of going to a dealer, well, of course, we'll be out of a job here. Maybe. It could be uh, Earl Stewart on manufacturers taking advantage of you instead of Earl Stewart on car dealers taking advantage of you. But the whole thing, retail, wholesale, manufacturing, technology is just uh, going through the roof. Um, now, I have to bring myself down to earth. Nancy and I were having our typical morning discussion before the radio show, and uh, we started to talk, talk about the fact that, you know, 95 plus percent of you out there are driving combustion engine vehicles. And you got enough problems with those. Now we're going to, now we're throwing the electric vehicle and we're throwing the autonomous at you and we're telling you how to deal with that. Well, you got enough problems dealing with the, the gasoline powered car that you're driving. And uh, we still have the dealer network, uh, the most uh, infamous group of retailers in the world are car dealers. Uh, the Gallup Annual Poll on Honesty and Ethics and Professions puts car dealers right at the bottom or next to bottom every year. Been doing that for 40 some odd years. So, uh, even though it's fun to talk about autonomous driving and electric vehicles and all that kind of thing, uh, we have to be careful not to go nuts in that area. And what's interesting to us isn't necessarily the same thing as interesting to you because you know we're in the business. We're on top of things as to what's going on. Uh, you've got that, uh, you know, uh, 2020, uh, uh, you know, uh, Honda Accord uh, that uh, you're talking about getting repaired or maintained, or you want to maybe buy a 2023 Honda Accord. You're probably going to buy a gas powered, maybe a hybrid. And so we got to help you there. And a caller, I think it was two weeks ago, text or something, he said, you should rename your car Earl Stewart on Tesla instead of Earl Stewart on cars. And that kind of sobered me up there because I do know that I tend to talk about uh, Tesla and I, I, it's hard for me to control myself. So help me control myself. Ask the questions that are on your mind, not on what's my mind or Nancy's or Stu's or Rick's mind, ask your questions, and probably uh, most of them are going to be related. Let me I get my tongue untwisted here. Be related to combustion engine vehicles, and if you want to talk to us with your human voice, you can call on the old-fashioned telephone, eight seven seven nine six zero ninety nine sixty. That's eight seven seven. 
860-9960. Nancy Stewart, sitting to my left here in the studio. She's got a laptop. She'll see the call when it comes in. Jeremy in the control room shoots it through to her laptop. She knows your name and where you're calling from. And we will stop whatever we're doing, go to the phone, and answer your call. We like the calls. They're, they're personable. We get your personality. Uh, everybody gets uh, a feel of the communication better on an old-fashioned phone call. Uh, if you don't want to do that, we have a text number. Uh, and my apologies to all you folks that listen every week. I know we've got some really loyal listeners. You've heard these. You, you probably know the numbers better than I do. Uh, text number is 772-497-6530. That's 772 772- Four nine seven six five three zero, and my son Stu, who's sitting right across the desk from us here, he monitors those texts and he keeps he keeps a, a tally on them, and uh, we get to them before the end of the show. So, uh, if you want to text, then I'm a texter. I have to confess. I know I'm, I'm <clears throat> bragging on the phone calls. To be honest with you, I get so many phone calls during the day. I prefer text, and uh, that's just me. But. Uh, I think listening is, is a special thing, so we prioritize you. We drop what we're doing. We've got five lines coming in. We promise we'll try not to make you wait too long. Now, there's all, there's my favorite communication, I just because I'm a, a tech guy, I, I like youranonymousfeedback.com. I discovered that, I think, or uh, I, I, I probably Googled it. And... It's a, way, it's a way you can contact the show, communicate with us, and we don't know where you are. You're, you're totally anonymous. I know some of you don't believe that. <laughs> I think that's the reason we don't get more of those. But we really, truly cannot trace the call. We don't know where you are, who you are. And you can say anything you want to because like, we can't get mad. Well, we can get mad at you, but we... We, we still get the message and we read it. Now, we will also repeat it on the air, although we will censor it for really, you know, for profanity and, and lewd and lascivious behavior. <laughs> you know, we got oh, to do that. But we will get the message. I strongly imply what, what it is. Yeah. I yeah. don't say the words, but I don't get in trouble with the FCC. Yeah, we, we put an expletive yeah. deleted kind of a thing. So we'll do that. And then, of course... Uh, uh, we've got the YouTube. Uh, YouTube is big, big, big. We just had a presentation from our marketing company at our dealership. Full disclosure, we own a Toyota dealership. Uh, but we had a marketing presentation, and YouTube was the number two form. TikTok was number one. Number two form of marketing communications. Isn't that wild? I mean, good Lord. Uh, YouTube. I mean, you remember when it was a daily newspaper? Yeah, and then it was radio, and then it was television. Boy, television was big. Boy, if you could afford to be on television and be marketing something, you were the king. Now, TikTok and YouTube. <laughs> Rick monitors YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Roland Cars. We have a cadre of the better informed, uh, a more entertaining, uh, better pre- the personalities on YouTube are incredible. We've got some people out there that are just really, really interesting. They could have their own show. And Rick Kearney, uh, who is sitting to my right, if you're new, Rick Kearney is our certified diagnostic master technician, knows everything you can know about an automobile. You can ask him anything about maintaining, repairing the car, and uh, he'll help you. you know, whether you're driving a Honda or a Prius, or a, uh, a Subaru, whatever you're driving, Rick can give you some tips, save you money. Uh, diagnose a problem over the air. He, he does that frequently. So uh, he's monitoring YouTube. He also monitors Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Earl and Cars. You know, Facebook, I thought I was really a cool guy because uh, I do fa- a whole lot of Facebook. People are stopping the Facebook, and they're going to YouTube, and they're going to TikTok. I think I have the TikTok app, but I don't even use it. So that's because I'm an old guy. But It's really uh, entertaining. Huh? It's really entertaining if you want to give it, up your yeah, private information. Yeah, to I, the I should. I, I, I'm going to make it a resolution to go and, uh, and familiarize. When I found out it was the number one marketing thing, 
I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still in, in the business. I still like to market things. So I, I've got to know about TikTok. So uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to start monitoring TikTok, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so there we are. Um, that's what we do. That's why we're here. Uh, 20 years we've been around. Nancy Stewart sitting to my left is my co-host from the get-go. And uh, she was with me when it was just a half an hour show. Now we're two hours. And we're on from 10 uh, to, uh, no, no, from 8 to 10 um, on Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to turn the mic over to Nancy because she's got uh, an offer a lot of you regulars know about uh, to the ladies out there. She's turned our show into a, a co-ed show from a old boys club. Started out just a bunch of old guys like me yakking back and forth at each other. Now we have about 50-50. The ladies are calling the show. Thank God for that because they know a lot of stuff we guys don't know because they're different people. They think differently. They operate differently, and, and they operate pretty damn well, in my opinion. So I'm going to turn the uh, mic over to Nancy, and she'll tell you what she's got to say. First of all, you're not an old guy. No, that's true. Okay. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Earl Stewart on Cars. Uh, I, I have to uh, mention something that Earl talked about when he opened the show, and that is this crazy world that we're living in now since uh, COVID. And, uh, you know, I really believe that it is, we're going to get back to that comfort zone. It's just going to be a rough journey. And uh, things are going to be comfortable again. So with that said, give us a call. Tell us how you feel. 877-960-9960. And you can text us at 772-497-6530. Also, you know of youranonymousfeedback.com, always available. And uh, you can let your voice be heard, and no one will know who you are. Uh, for the ladies, uh, I thank you each and every week. Uh, you've been instrumental in getting us the ladies where we are today and um, it has been quite a journey again uh, i give uh, fifty dollars to the first two new female callers and if you could be so kind to give us a call say hello or if you'd like to share your experience with us whether it be leasing buying uh, whether it be service Service is big with the ladies. The percentage of women who come through the service department will really surprise you. 877-960-9960. That's 877-960-9960. And don't forget about Earl's column. Um, very interesting again this week. And you can pick that up in the Hometown News, uh, the Florida Weekly, or you can go to Earl on Cars, and that column is don't pay full price for half a car. Makes a whole lot of sense. You want to take a look at that. And more good news, um, I believe that it was Stu who mentioned it last week about um, incentive, car incentives, and they are returning. And um, as uh, inventory rises, slowly rises, and um, you've got to make sure. Um, I'm tapping my pen on my book right now because I, I couldn't emphasize this even more than uh, verbally. Make sure you're on top of things as far as the incentives are concerned. The dealer isn't going to say, hey, we have this, this, and this for you. They're going to keep that quiet because that's money in their pocket. So make sure that you know what the incentive is in the purchase that you make. Again, that number is 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Now back to the recovering car dealer. Yeah, you know, I, I forgot to cover perhaps the arguably the most important part of our show, at least the most entertaining. That's our mystery shopping report. And that'll come in the last half hour. And uh, we go out somewhere, and we have a mystery shopper right now named Agent Lightning. We've had several over the years. Agent Lightning is uh, arguably the best we've had, and she... Uh, she wanders around a lot. She's, you know, you'll see her in Tennessee. You'll see her in Pennsylvania. And uh, she's in Florida now. 
Uh, she, uh, she hits around. We concentrate on South Florida, I have to tell you, but nowhere that I know of is there an equivalent to what we do. First of all, we, we, what is it? we sneak into it. We don't sneak in. We, we go in uh, disguised as a customer, Agent Lightning does. She pretend, pretends to buy or lease a car from a dealer. Now, we name the dealer. That's pretty dangerous, folks. Libel, slander, you know, very scary. Uh, but we, we name the dealer. We name the salespeople. We name the sales managers. And if the dealership broke the law, we're talking about federal and Florida law, we say so. Now, do you know what could happen to us, me personally, and Stu, and for that matter, uh, Rick and your, your co-conspirators, Nancy, uh, maybe they might even go after Jonathan. You never know. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know. I think the disclosure in the beginning of this show says yeah. the opinions are of Earl Stewart's only and not of the crew and staff. Yeah, they, they do that disclosure, and, and I consider that a compliment. The fact of the matter is I think a good lawyer could penetrate that defense because what about somebody that doesn't listen to the first part of the oh, show? Oh, no. That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and I say something like, Dealer XYZ broke the law, and Dealer XYZ says, oh, no, I didn't. And he, girly, he hires a really good lawyer. I think they could, they could go after everybody. Anyway, I, I probably terrified the radio station, the owners, and even the people in the studio here. But the point is, we've been doing this for 20 years, and nobody sued us, much less one. To be honest with you, I hope somebody sues us. I mean, I really mean that because I would demand a jury trial. I would demand cameras in the, uh, or I guess, iPhones. <laughs> have, there will be 300 cameras in the We'd have video. Um, uh, I would publicize I that, would take that it to trial. the Supreme Court. And, and this would be national PR. <laughs> so whether you won or lost, they'd hear what you did. And even if you won, they'd think, boy. He got off, you know, pretty easy, from, uh, from my opinion, Rick. Deacon One actually has an incredible story that fits right in with that. Well, Rick, let's hear it. Apparently, the Stellantis Group that owns Chrysler. Dodge Chrysler, uh, he says, Negan says, I would like to ask Earl's opinion. The Durango Hellcat owners, uh, the Dodge Durango is a midsize SUV that, for some reason, Dodge decided to put in a Hellcat motor driveline, which is a super strong, basically it turns this mid-sized SUV into a rocket, mm -hmm. are suing Stellantis. A Durango Hellcat was promoted as a one-year-only vehicle for 2021. They were going to be a limited production and only for that year, meaning obviously would make it a very valuable vehicle to collect. 2003, Stellantis announced a 2023 Durango Hellcat, so the 2021 owners are quite angry. Do you think the owners can, stew, or can sue Stellantis over false advertising? And because 21 was advertised specifically that it was going to be the only year ever that that vehicle would be produced. I'd say absolutely. Uh, I think they, uh, obviously, they can sue. You can sue anybody. Uh, but uh, the fact is, I think they can sue and win. But they, it won't go to trial because I think Stellantis knows they're guilty, and they'll settle out of court. Ninety-some-odd percent of all lawsuits are settled out of court. So that's that goes without saying. But, yeah, there you go. And uh, 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 it's... Uh, it's exciting, the mystery shopping report we have at the end of the show. So stay tuned, even if you don't want to listen to us yak. Tune in around 9.30, and you'll be able to hear that mystery shopping report. And by the way, it is, I don't want to give it away. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, either it's a, almost the best or don't almost the worst. Don't call it a doozy. <laughs> don't call it a doozy. <laughs> no, <you're right. laughs> we have too many doozies. We need something above doozy. Well, let's get to our text or our YouTubes or whatever. Who wants to go? Can we say that on the air? Doozy? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> if we elevate the... I was going to say Doozy Plus. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got a text from Anne-Marie. Uh, she sent a, a cartoon. I sent it to Jonathan. He can put it on the screen for our streaming audience. Um, 
Um, I saw a cartoon in the paper that brought home the importance of mechanics slash auto technicians. Thank you, Rick, and all the other technicians out there that keep our cars running. This got me thinking. Fifty years ago, it was common to see fathers and sons working on the family car, changing tires, changing the oil, doing tune-ups, and routine maintenance. Kids developed a love of cars. They wanted to drive as soon as possible and often became mechanics. Nowadays, cars are so sophisticated that it's getting harder for people to do their own maintenance. I understand that kids nowadays aren't interested in learning to drive as soon as they are legally allowed. That's true. (laughs) I have a niece that is putting that off. Um, Much less repair cars. Um, That presents a problem. Until the day comes when cars are totally self-driving and repairs can be taken care of by either software update or a skilled robot... How are we as a society going to train and retain all the auto technicians that we need in the meantime? And that's from Anne-Marie, and I hope you saw the cartoon up there. It's kind of kind of inspiring. Um, that's a great question. Um, I think that for a long time we're going to have a lot of non-autonomous used cars and non-electric cars that are going to require that. Um, but eventually, over time, there will be fewer mechanics and technicians needed and Eventually, just like you know, all old technologies, um, we don't have a lot of chariot, you know, maintenance guys around anymore. But I think it's going to be longer um, than, than than we think. There are still farriers and blacksmiths yes. who shoe horses. Right. So I'm I'm just saying it, it'll become a um it, it'll it'll drop that like number a, dramatically. It'll become like an artistry, like uh, like you see people that are make their own wine or olives for for the guys that can still repair the old cars. Right. And they'll be highly de- in demand. I, I still kind of laugh because when I started working for Earl 28 years ago and working next to me was a young fellow by the name of John Desmond. Yeah. He had been to uh, Lincoln Tech, uh, or no, I beg your pardon, New England Tech. And their big advertisement was be a New England Tech graduate or compete with one. Right, I remember. Well, he bought an old FJ40 Land Cruiser the Jeep style, the old original one. And when he couldn't get it to run at one point, I asked him if he had checked the points on it. And he looked at me and said, points? I don't know anything about points. They never taught us about points. <laughs> and I kind of laughed because I, one of the first things they taught us was the history of cars so that we understood the basic how the basic systems right. became the electronic systems. And I helped him adjust the points on this thing and got it running quick and easy. And it was just that... The idea that he had gone through the entire school and it paid like thirty thousand dollars and didn't, didn't know learn the points and condenser yeah. on an ignition system that now it's all electronic, but even so I could still go back and work on fifties and sixties cars. Thank you, Rick. And yeah. it just it's and then the apocalypse. We're not going to have that anymore, right? But you'll be very valuable when the when the when the and the Armageddon comes. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so, but Stu, Stu, I think that you probably are better able than anyone here to answer this question. I think. Uh, would you say that um, there are less Gen X and Millennials that would say, "Oh, geez, I got to go out front and I got to fill my windshield wiper fluid," or "Damn, I got to change this tire." You know, not uh, many. Like, I mean, Rick is an exception. I think you are. Um, in my in my generation, which is Generation X, I don't know very many people that fix their own cars or do their own maintenance. Um, you know, I was born in 1968. Um, I grew up with a love of cars. I couldn't wait to get my license. Uh, a lot of that was I was in a car family, um, but uh, um, I really didn't have a lot of friends. I mean. I mean, most of my friends can change a tire, but they're not doing their own maintenance. Yeah, I think. But, uh, let, let's take for example, uh, you you have, well, are they called still called teenagers? Yeah, uh, they're <laughs> they're a little older than well, close to being. Uh, but w- would you say, you know, one of them would go out front and say, "Hey, listen, I got to change that tire"? No, or, no, I don't think Gen Z, and I don't know them all, but I know a little subset. Um, for my kids, they don't change tires or know much about the cars at all. It's- let, let, let me interrupt yeah. there yeah. And, and just get on with the thing. I, well, let me say this about tire changing. You know, tire changing is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. And it ought to be uh, recognized. It's not, no longer a badge of ability and um, I can change my own tires. Uh, I've changed a lot of tires in, when I was much younger. And I, I can remember almost dying. Yeah. Uh, I remember changing a tire in Elmira, New York, when it was below zero, 
and uh, I had to put chains uh, on my tire. I didn't change the tire. I, I jacked up the back of the of the car on uh, Ice-Filled Street, and, oh. and and it was and the wind was blowing. The car was waving. And I'm under there putting these chains on. So uh, I think it's a good thing we don't maintain our cars anymore. Uh, you can get electrocuted. You can get crushed. Uh, you can yeah. get hurt badly. And so you old timers out there, I know you won't listen to me, but I don't, I don't uh, uh, blame the, uh, the younger folks for not wanting to work on a car. Yeah. Get electrocuted. You don't want to do and that. And plus, <laughs> like a lot of things, it doesn't make sense because every, usually everything is with an app or a phone call. So roadside is, exactly. assistance is what you get is yeah. when you go for okay. it. I agree. You know, with, what else did Anne Marie have to say? I, I agree with what you said, Stu. Uh, but you said you came from a car family. I came from a different culture. And we just kind of grew up. It was just uh, secondhand what we did. Um, your dad just talked about chains and all that. That was just something I did. And you take these safety precautions with brick behind the tire, you know, this behind the back tire, and it was just secondhand. A couple of bags of kitty litter in the back seat. There, every everything and anything. Yep. So um, your dad wants to move on with uh, Anne Marie. I can see him glaring at okay. me. We have uh, another text from Bob. Um, good morning. My question is with the push button starting system that works with key fobs. If you're on a trip and you lose the key fob, what do you do? Unfortunately, if you lose the key fob, you're going to have to go to the manufacturing dealer to get a replacement. Um, that cost a fortune. And it'll yep. cost a lot of money, yeah. Um, roadside assistance, we were just talking about that, can get you to the dealership. Um, but the dealer needs to actually program a new remote that matches your car. Now, there is a – there, and this is actually one of the few – um, warranty type things that I would highly recommend if you feel that you're one of those people that you lose things a lot. Right. Um, my first thing, put an air tag on your keychain. You've got there a good go. chance then because you're everybody knows right where their cell phone is. Half the people can't tell you where your keys are. Half the people half can't the tell you what an air tag is. Well, an air tag basically is a tracking device. We got an air tags all over the house. Put a tracking device on your keys. But, but if you do Google lose that fob. tracking device for keys. Yeah, if you do lose that fob, there is there are companies out there where you can buy insurance, basically, that you pay a certain amount per month. And if you lose your keys, they will pay to replace that key for you. And it actually is... It'll, it'll pay for itself if you lose your keys you more also, than once. You could also put it in a little jar every month in case you lose your keys. That, that certainly, too. <laughs> and by the way, bear in mind, if, say, for instance, you happen to fall in a pool or something with that key fob and it stops working, don't just assume that you're stuck. Hold the key up to that push start button within an inch, half an inch of the button and push the button with your foot on the brake and it will still start the engine. Because the chip inside is totally waterproofed itself. The electronics that send the radio signal are not. They, they really can't be. Uh, without they make it really easy. Massive fortune. For it. But the chip itself, as long as it's up next to that spot, you'll be able to start the car. You can start the car. That's so Good cool. Good information. All right. I'm going to jump over to anonymous feedback because, uh, unless we have any calls, um, here's a good one. I didn't realize this. Um, it says, I saw, um, it's, it's also from Roy from Denver. It's anonymous feedback. Um, I saw an article stating a federal agency is concerned that some EVs, including some Teslas, don't include an AM radio. The article stated the electronics, uh, drivetrain, power converters, et cetera, cost so much interference that an AM radio would be unusable. Uh, do you know if this is common across all EVs or just select manufacturers? And that's from Roy. I read that article, too. It was, I think it was the New York Times. And, yeah, Tesla, I didn't know this because yeah. I don't really listen to the radio, but they've removed AM radio for that reason. Um, I, um, I, I did a little Googling. Um, I guess AD, ra AM radio, which we're on right now, uh, listener, listenership has shrunk over the years. It's mainly no, we're on people. FM. We're on both. Yep. <laughs> and... Uh, um, about 20% of the global or the American listening audience listens to AM radio. Um, when that happens, if that's true, um, I mean, you, there's other ways to get radio on streaming devices on your phone. You can play it through your car if you have a Tesla right now. And most do. So, most do, especially yeah. Tesla's. Tesla already has an internet radio um, 
service um, that's separate from your phone that you can dial in a, an AM radio station on the car. So it's coming through the internet um, wirelessly, I mean, over th- you know, the 5G network, and then your car is going to play it. So effectively, you, you're not going to lose it. But the actual radio, um, apparently, that's, uh, that's what's happening. And my comment also would be uh, the, our federal government and, the, and our state governments and all the other people that are responsible for uh, advising the public of emergencies ought to be thinking about a better way to reach everybody than AM radio. So they're living in the 20th century. Uh, The people that are doing the emergency warnings should be in the 21st century, and there should be digital warnings to everybody. Okay. Uh, Rick, uh, how are you doing over there with comments? Uh, Pretty quiet right now. Okay, that uh, gives me a cue to mention the telephone number, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Don't forget, youranonymousfeedback.com. Here's a little bulletin uh, from the Automotive News. Nancy and I read that every week to get some interesting stuff for the show. And uh, this, this will send a chill down all you dealers' backs. Uh, including Stu and I, but uh, Mercedes has built a, uh, I think it's like a 800-foot uh, showroom in, in, or 800-foot dealership in Georgia, something like that, very small. In other words, it's a boutique kind of a, we don't call ourselves a car dealership. You come in here and you uh, buy a car, and they're also going to satellite service. So the brick-and-mortar dealerships that uh, most you car dealers out there have, including us, uh, we have a a Taj Mahal, a huge dealership that we spend a lot of money on, renovated two or three times, and a huge investment in uh, this brick-and-mortar dealership. And the, the fact of the matter is, people are buying cars online. They're not walking in the dealerships anymore. Uh, you uh, go online and you can conduct the entire transaction from choosing your vehicle uh, to uh, financing it to, to uh, buying it, paying cash, anything you want to do. you got the video apps. you got everything going for you. Do it on and your phone. You, and you don't need a 80,000-square-foot uh, uh, giant palace uh, dealership with a, uh, you know, a Starbucks in there in a massage chair. I mean, the dealerships today are way overbuilt mainly because the manufacturers have put a gun to our dealers, uh, you know, our dealership. I, I, I could tell you some stories that would really uh, make you angry about how Toyota pressured me. Uh, I used to be at a little bitty dealership in Lake Park, Florida, and uh, they said, either you build us a new dealership or else, and then they wanted to tell me to build it on I-95, and they wanted me to spend millions and millions of dollars, and so... I, uh, I didn't do it for a long time, and they really, really pressured I had a I had a meeting in Deerfield, the Southeast Toyota Distributorship Headquarters, and that's who I report to for Toyota. And they called me down there, and when I went down there, I brought my attorney. You're and, talking uh, about 30-plus 30, 30 years ago. Yeah, and I sat in that room with, uh, with the top people for Toyota in this region and uh, listened to them. Well, they didn't threaten me as much because I had my attorney there. They asked me why I brought the attorney, and I lied to him. I said he was a, a one, of, one of my board of directors, therefore he's had every right to be there. So it, it's gone from that now to the manufacturers saying, uh, you dealers that spent uh, $20 million on that new dealership, you shouldn't have done that. You know, all you have to do now is have a computer. And you're a dealer. I'm sure glad we didn't put in that Starbucks. Okay. I, I think your office at the dealership is bigger than 800 square feet. Absolutely. Our service, <laughs> no. our service customer waiting lounge was so small. How small was it? Okay. <laughs> it was so small that when I went in there to say hello to the customers, I had to knock on the door because the door opened in, and we were so small we had to have a chair in front of the door. So I had to enter. I'd ask my customers to stand up so I'd come in and say, "Is everything okay?" Said, and now it we was have, until you made me get up. <laughs> now we yeah. have uh, bagels and coffee and uh, 
and uh, television sets and beautiful lounge chairs, plug-in chargers, Big and aquarium. a giant fish tank. You just, you just, other than the, gold, the, the goldfish, the fish tank. <laughs> goldfish tank. <laughs> other than the fish tank, everything you described was pretty cheap there. That's good. Anyway. Uh, this aquarium, the, folks, your kids can actually go through a little space and stand up, and they're standing in the middle of the aquarium. Yeah. Okay. Town Lakes is cool. a, quite an attraction. 877-960-9960. Or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Ladies, uh, let's celebrate uh, History Month. Yes, Women's History Month. It's March. Give me a call. Give us a call. 877-960-9960. First two ladies. First two Ladies, first two ladies, did you hear me? You can win yourself $50, $50. Just call and say hello. Um, and ladies, did you read about the Ford Explorer and how they're celebrating Women's Month? Oh, my goodness. Um, Rick, you had to have heard this story. You, you have, I, I actually have it. I've no? Okay. No heater, no windshield wipers, no turn signals or brake lights, no GPS. All are missing from the Ford Explorer. Men's only addition. Not because Ford <laughs> Motor Company is cutting corners or think men don't use turn signals anyway, but rather to spotlight many indispensable vehicle features invented by women. Wow. Invented by women. And you remember the week before last, I talked about Buick. And, uh, well, we all did, even uh, even Stu. But this is really interesting. And um, I'm sure you're all familiar uh, with uh, with Brian. Uh, Brian uh, Cranston, I, I believe his mm -hmm. name is. And he's he was with uh, Breaking Bad. Well, he, he just puts the commercial across like crazy. And... Uh, Everybody is talking about bare bones Ford Explorer, the man's celebrating edition. Women's Month. The man's edition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, so it reminds me of when um, uh, the Simpsons Homer designed his own car um, based on all the things he wanted. Oh yeah, oh man. He thought he could design the the, the all American, the great American car. <laughs> it was ridiculous because he's an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he's a what? Because he's a. Well, this is a nice bull <laughs> session we're having here in the studio. You, you folks out there, call the show, please. Yeah. I'm begging you. Well, we have someone who has called the show, and that's Marty. Good. Oh, good. Um, and uh, we have some other callers that have popped up. So let's take Marty from West Palm Beach. And uh, um, Mario and Howard, hold on. We'll be right with you. Good morning, Marty. Good morning. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Great. But I got a couple questions for you. First question, on a Camry hybrid, does the brake... Uh, when you put the brakes on, or I should say when you take your foot off the accelerator, does the car slow down like it does on a Tesla? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Second question, when you get a new Toyota, do they give you the second key now, or do they have to mail it to you four months later? No, they're, uh, now they've got it to where they do have uh, the two keys available now. There might be a Tacoma, I think. That is there still a Tacoma that's with the uh, holding off on the key? Yeah, uh, they. I think they're, they're finally got up. them caught up. We're all caught up now. Yep. Okay. And the third question, I have to knock. Earl may not like this, but I have to knock <laughs> Tesla. Here's here's the thing. I went over there and I said, "How much will you give me for my trade in on a, on a three or a Y?" So they told me, "We won't give you an exact price." until you order it for $250, and the $250 is not refundable. I said, well, that doesn't make any sense. If I don't know the amount you're going to give me, why would I pay you $250 just to find that out? They said, well, that's our rules. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that. I don't, rem I don't remember whether they asked me to do that or not. Uh, a Tesla, right? Well, you didn't trade right, anything in. right. Yeah. yeah, you didn't trade in anything, so that's a difference. But th maybe they just changed this now. Yeah, but I ordered the car. We won't but you yeah. didn't have a trade in. He said they won't tra appraise I, your car. They won't oh, 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 they won't trade the car in. They won't appraise so your they car. Give me oh, the price. Price. They'll okay. give me an estimated price. I got you, yeah. But they won't give me an exact price. Yeah. 
unless I order it. I got and you. To, to order it, you got to pay two fifty, and the two fifty is not refundable. Well, you know, uh, I also talked on the show a long time ago. I didn't th- th- think they had a dealer fee or a junk fee or hidden fee. They actually do. Tesla has a very small. I forgot what it might be. Two fifty or two hundred. It is two fifty. I yeah. think it was it was one hundred when when you ordered yours and they've they've raised they, it. They jacked it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I right. think that's stupid. Really, I, I think that's really stupid. Now, um, real quick, I'm not defending Tesla. I'm just wondering that. I know that a um, a Tesla boutique. They're not technically dealerships around here. And so they're not equipped with the personnel of a dealership. Um, I think appraising, uh, appraising a car requires a certain amount of, you know, there is some infrastructure, um, and maybe there's not equipped to do like a big appraisal. I don't. I'm just wondering. Like, uh, I don't know if they have a used car department with appraisers. Yeah, and, it's, it's still bad business. I, I, I totally uh, agree with you. Yeah, I'm just probably, probably cost them two hundred fifty dollars if you look at it in the big picture to do the appraisal. But it's still just not something you do with customers. And uh, and the uh, uh, it's and good the news. Thing, That's good to hear. And the other thing that I have to complain about in a normal car dealership, when you buy a car, you can test drive the car. Mm-hmm. And a Tesla. When that car comes in, it's yours. Once you drive it, I mean, you know, and the, if you've been in Okeechobee, you know it's not too big of a lot. So you, you, can't, you can't drive it too far to test drive it. And they said, once, once you take it out, it's yours. Once you, the, no, the car that you ordered. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, well, they have cars that you can test drive. Uh, right. I had a time, but when your car comes in, I, again, that's good information. I'm surprised. I mean, uh, I think Tesla might be falling into the trap of we're so good, we're so popular, and we have such high demand and low supply, we can get away with this stuff. And I think that uh, Elon Musk probably is not a micromanager. He doesn't see this going on. But all these things that you mentioned, it kind of reminds me of uh, J.M. Lexus. That Lexus dealer, Coconut Creek, that's near Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the largest Lexus dealer in the world. And they advertise no dealer fee, and Lexus says they don't have any hidden fees. And J.M. Lexus has got, what does this do, a $200 uh, dealer fee? I don't know. What th- I don't remember. Very small. Yeah. And I've talked to the Three. general manager down there. And uh, by the way, I got to call him anyway. His name is uh, Mohammed, uh, aka Mo. Uh, and I've got to call him and talk to him about some other things. But uh, I'll ask him the same question I asked the previous general manager. Uh, here you are, a Lexus dealer. You're making more money than anybody in, in the world. And you say you don't have a dealer fee. You do. That's petty nonsense. You shouldn't do it. We have a caller. Many. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for the information. Thank you, Marty. And have a good day, everybody. You too. Thank you, Marty. It's great. Always great hearing from you. 877-960-9960. Give us a call. And also text us, if you wish, at 772-497-6530. We're going to go to Mario in Davie. Thank you for holding on. Hello. uh, This is Mario. Um, Earl, Nancy, and uh, Rick. uh, I'm a longtime listener, 15, 20 years back. You guys are wonderful. I enjoy your show. Thank you. Um, and it's, yeah, and then, uh, I'm all excited here. I got a couple of things. Uh, for Rick, one question and just a couple other co- comments. I bought a Mazda in 2015. It was a 2012, maybe 32,000 miles. Ever since I bought it in the summer of 2015, the engine light uh, came on here and there, just enough to come on and off and you forget about it. Also, when you would come up to a light or you're stopping at night, the headlights would flicker a little bit. So from 2015, on and off, but just enough, you forget about it and it came. Well, seven years later, 20, the, the end of 2022, it just stopped bothering me. I've taken the car up to Georgia and back a few times. And uh, so all of a sudden the lights coming on more and more. Now I've kept maintenance on my car religiously. So just the end of last year, I put in coil packs. I did spark plugs, um, clean the things up. But it's running the best it's ever ran, okay? I've never had no problems with it. Mm. Still, the lights flicker a little bit here and there. (laughs) And the light still keeps coming on. So Uh it's just blowing me away. But I just want to make two other comments. I've been an AM listener for a long, long time. And I've noticed this last year or two, 
the interference with AM, and I'm all around Broward County, has just been terrible. It's mm-hmm. just been terrible. Anyway, uh, but I, I, now I, I watch you on uh, Facebook here when I get home. I, I work overnight. So. But what do you think, Rick? It's just it's killing me. So I bought a computer from Amazon, and I just shut the damn thing off. But it's run. I've never had, I think I got a PO 300 on it, Misfire. A little bit. It's from 15 to now. And uh, uh, so I keep shutting it off, but it's run the best it's ever. But the lights still flicker here and there, just once a week, once a month. So you tell me. Okay, PO300 code uh, means the computer is seeing a random misfire, but it's not able to determine directly which cylinder it is. Uh, It means you've got some very tiny little problem there. Um, and the lights flickering, those both speak to me of a ground wire. I, if, if I were really looking for this, and this may be extremely hard to find because it's such a tiny thing that's so intermittent and has yeah. not gotten worse over the years, that's, that's what really tells me you got something tiny going on there. I almost wonder if you have a ground wire where the bolt is tight, everything seems tight, but there's just that one little bit of looseness that loses connection just enough that it makes those lights flicker. And at the same time, it may be sending a bad signal to the computer, Uh making it think it has a misfire. Typically, when you get the PO300, you'll also get a PO301, 2, 3, 4, that will uh, tell you just exactly which cylinder is misfiring. And having only the 300, um, yep. that yep. speaks to me of a ground wire situation or possibly the computer. Um, if that's all it's doing, I would kind of just wait and monitor it as you have been because <laughs> it's not causing you a drivability problem at this point. Not at all. Obviously, all. you know, did, you're, did you're you way your gas mileage went way down. Did you say your gas mileage was suffering? No, and you know, and that was one thing on my mind because I'm on the road a bit, and I I'm getting on the average thirty miles to a gallon because I zero out, and then I kind of once a month or so just mm-hmm. check it. But I'm right up there. I I've not seen really gas mileage, and I'm on the highway a lot, and sometimes I'm a heavy hitter. So, but I can't really say my gas mileage since I put in my coil packs. Just uh, it was just. What a, it just, it, for a little, what is it, a 2.0, you know, and it's about 150,000 miles on, it, you know, it goes, you know, it goes. Like they so, say on the, like they used to say on the Sopranos, forget yeah. about it. Yeah. Forget if, about if, it. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And at this point, <laughs> uh, I think it, it may yeah. be, you may be, a, there's something a little broke, but yeah. I, if, if it's still working, I would just go with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't want to tell. I'm a little bit of a mechanic um, uh, there. But, um, and uh, another thing, I had a 96 Tacoma. I was in field service through uh, that them couple years. Second I year they made them. Uh, and uh, I think I put about 150,000 miles on it, about 16 months. Gave it to my daughter. It was clean. It was uh, red. And uh, about a month or two later, she's taking a left, and there's that, you know, them yellow poles by a gas station. They yellow like the block yeah. off. So yep. Oh, she no. totaled out the whole thing. Oh. So, but I, I, yeah, yeah. I was looking oh, for boy. another one last year, but I'm totally outpriced. My car is still fine, so I'll wait a year or two. But do we see prices coming down on anything? And I like to keep a car, but should I, should I lease? I mean, I see the lease offers on TV, mm-hmm. but three, no. four, five, no. six thousand no. down. I mean, I could afford it, but what do I do? No. Read, read the fine print, and you'll find that they're going to get you. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, it's, it doesn't make sense to put that much money down when you when you put yeah. a big amount of money down on a lease. All you're doing yeah. is um, reducing the payment. You're not you're not putting building an equity or okay. um, reducing the amount of time they're going to pay off the uh, the vehicle at all. So, and right now, um, you know, we got a Toyota has some new. Um, incentives for leases they're not really Im- impressive 
Um, so, yeah, if I mean leasing, well, leasing is way off. It used to yeah. be thirty percent. Now nationally, yeah. it's down to nine percent. Yeah, that's yeah. really low. Yeah, because most leasing was done with special incentives from the factory. So, you okay. know, if you're paying a really ridiculous low payment without a lot of money down, then you start thinking about it. But right now, it's, it's will there good. be a better time this year to look? Any, or is it? Yeah, just, later on. Right yeah. now, uh, um, yeah, at our dealership and 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 other dealerships across the country, inventories are, are slowly growing again. And as they okay, do, you'll okay. see deals will get better. Um, they're still not great, um, but they're better than they were uh, a few months ago. And, um, yeah. and we're go- they're going in the right direction. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I've always enjoyed your show, and I'm glad I called. And uh, one other thing, years ago, a lady called. And I'm one, when I go to a light, if I know the light is going to take a minute or so, or I'm not on a hill, I put my car in neutral. Now, you got to be careful. Because if you're sleeping and you hit your gas, <laughs> but I remember they asked Rick that years ago, and, he, and I've been doing it for years, and my, I think maybe I'm maybe I'm getting good gas mileage then. But I always thought of saving my light bulbs. That's why I've done it. <laughs> Mario, <laughs> it's a, it's really great talking to you, boy. You yes, sound like yes. as if that you are an educated consumer, and my goodness, do you take care of your car? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. and are, are we impressed that you have been watching and listening to us <laughs> for as long as you have? It was just great talking to you, Mario. Yeah. Call more often. You yeah, have a lot of great things to share with us. Okay. All right. Back at you, and you guys take care and stay healthy. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, We're going to go straight to Howard, who's holding in Jupiter. He is a regular caller. Good morning. Good morning, Howard. Oh, good morning. I hope you all well. Beautiful day today. They have the Turtle Fest, as you know. Turtle Fest. And, uh, yeah, Turtle Fest today. That's right. Yeah, okay. over at the uh, Loggerhead. Loggerhead, you got it. Okay, um, I received something from Carfax. I hear you, you, you have some kind of relationship with Carfax. So it said t- t- the service is uh, due on my car, and it gives the address, the correct address, but it says West Palm Beach. Uh, instead of, okay, uh, so what, what I did is I, uh, uh, I went to the dealership. I spoke to Josh. So uh, Josh knows about it. Right. And Josh says they'll fix it because if somebody puts in that navigation, West Palm Beach, they're not going to get uh, Turtle uh, Stewart. You know, um, act, there's something strange. I've seen this before, and this is uh, just, I see this on websites. Um, like when you put in your address and it starts autofilling. Have you seen this? Like if you're buying something online. I see that a lot of time where you put in a, 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 a zip code and it comes up as West Palm Beach and you can't change it. Um, but we can change that and, and that Carfax thing, Marty. I think that's what that is. Uh, but we have access to that to go there and, and change it for you. But has, have you seen that before? I've like, I have. Yeah. And I've even gotten things addressed to um, my it, house as West Palm Beach. Yeah, well, that does Jupiter for Nancy and I. We live in Jupiter in the colony. Yeah. So it's frustrating, though, Marty. I mean, how yeah, are, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, a couple of other questions. I'll be fast. Uh, I want to clean my battery. And uh, I don't want to. I don't want to lose my uh, navigation on my cell phone, which I would if I uh, if I unhook the battery completely. Can I leave the car running and then uh, take the positive off and clean that? Put it back on and take take the negative off and clean that. The car will still be running. Uh, it, it, the car will not cut off if uh, I leave it running. However, I was told that I could get a shock. Is that true, Rick? It's it's possible. It I would leave the leave the terminals on, turn the car off, take a just a simple uh, paper cup, a little bit of baking soda, some water, mix it up to where it's you know dissolved in nicely, an old toothbrush, scrub the terminals with that, rinse it off with a water hose, and blot the top of the battery dry with some paper towels, and then drive the car. That's that's all you really need to do. Uh, you if you can get some handle? protective spray from the auto parts store, spray that on there. Otherwise, even just some grease, put some grease on there. Simple Vaseline actually works. Just a, a, a coat of Vaseline, smack it on there nice and thick. Olive oil? It, well, olive oil will run off, but something will stick and stay on there. So that what will happen is it will stay on there and create a barrier so that oxygen cannot get to the metal components. If the oxygen cannot get there, it cannot oxidize, and therefore, no corrosion. So you don't unhook the battery. Is that what you're telling me? No. Yeah, that's what he's telling you, yeah. Do not unhook the battery. That's exactly what I'm telling you, yes. 
Okay, how about dielectric grease? Dielectric grease is actually used for the rubber boots going on the spark plug. This is a grease that keeps the rubber boot from sticking to the ceramic spark plug, but does not conduct electricity, so the electricity will not go through it into the uh, metal tube that the spark plug is in. And you really don't want to use that on your battery because it's more expensive and you would need so much of it dielectric that it, grease. it costs you like 20 bucks just to protect the battery terminals. I've heard of dielectric materialism, but dielectric grease? Dielectric grease. Oh, electric. Dielectric, yep. <laughs> I thought you said dielectric. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, one other fast question. Uh, now, that, that'll be the, my quote for today. Uh, I have 040 uh, white uh, paint, uh, uh, which means there's no clear coat uh, on it. And uh, uh, what is? And I was told that uh, it's warranted against flaking. What does flaking mean? And what happens if I get uh, uh, rust spots on the metal? Is that covered? Flaking is when the paint does not adhere to the primer coat underneath. And the way that this will be tested, if you go to the dealership to have it tested to see if it'll if it qualifies for that, they'll put some tape it's over. on the paint. And oh, yeah. There's there's no more there's no more campaign for the okay. delamination. Yeah, that has expired for that that extended warranty on the paint. But Howard, your issue you have a, the O four O paint, and that was a different issue that that it, it faded and got really chalky looking. How's how's the paint looking now? Great. Paint is great. I think they made some improvements. This this was a problem years and years ago. I don't know if the chalkiness is. I don't think we're seeing a lot of that now. Yeah. On older, older cars. What year's your car, Howard? Uh, 2017. 17. Mother's, Mother's California Gold Auto Wax. Do that about once every three months. You'll be in great shape. Mother's California Gold <laughs> Auto Wax. Yep. So I have to remember. I'll have to write that down. There, there's really okay. only one reason I recommend that above the others is because you're going to be out there working in the heat, hopefully in the shade, to do this. And it's got a nice cherry fragrance. Yeah, so you at least to it to smells nice. to get it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, that's great. Uh, okay, guys. Thank, uh, have thank a good you. Day, and don't, don't forget the turtle chest. Thanks, Howard. We certainly won't. Thank you, Howard. We love hearing from you. Uh, George from uh, Pennsylvania. First of all, let me say you get an award. I was truly hoping that you would hang on, and you have hung on the for longest quite some over. time. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What can we do yeah, for my, you? Well, my, uh, excuse me, I got a little throat thing going on. Uh, my comment is on the Stellantis Dodge mm -hmm. uh, situation. I remember back in the 1980s, uh, I was a staunch BMW motorcycle rider. And I still rode them for 40 years, so I gave up a couple years ago. But in the mid 80s, they came out made an announcement that they were doing away with their famous V uh, twin cylinder opposed motors. And we're going to replace it with a four cylinder inline motor. And they said next year, I think it was no more twin cylinder bikes. Well, you can imagine the stink that was raised among BMW purists, but they stuck to their guns. And the next year, they came out with a limited edition, a limited number of uh, last edition models, special paint jobs, pinstriping, and it even had last edition written on the motorcycle. And they did stop making the twins and brought out the K-bikes, which were the four cylinders. And people just went crazy over them, angry, upset. So BMW, a year or two later, caved in and started to reproduce the twins alongside these four-cylinder models. Well, any, a large number of the people who bought the uh, last editions, as these Dodge owners did, were, went up on their hind legs and started to file class action suits. And like I said, I rode, rode motorcycles many years after that, and their opposition went nowhere. BMW continued to make the twins. They're still making twins. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but it, the thing fizzled. Yeah, that's uh, 
I, uh, from a legal standpoint, I don't think they're going to come back and bite them on that. They responded to the uh, conversations or the, or the request of their customers. Um, I've got nothing but good things to say about BMW. I, I even though I, I, I have a problem with them on the road because a certain sort of a, a personality seems to be driving most of them, and they drive real fast, a little bit reckless in my opinion. But the vehicle itself uh, ranked... Uh, uh, had more models and number one ranking by Consumer Reports than any other uh, manufacturer uh, for the annual auto issue this year, and uh, uh, BMW is uh, is uh, is number two selling luxury car, number two to uh, Tesla, as a matter of fact. So, I, uh, I I hear what you're saying. It's annoying. If I were in your shoes, I'd feel the same way. But I don't think there'd be a lawsuit a lawsuit in the wings about that. Yeah, and then BMW never made any concessions to these people. You know, trying to give them a few bucks back or anything like that. They just says, too bad. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I got to say. Terrible. Well, thank you, George. George, I appreciate yeah. the call. Yeah, thank you sure. so much, George. Thank you for your patience. Give us a call again. A seven seven nine six zero ninety nine sixty. Or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Don't forget, ladies, first two new lady callers, you can win yourself $50 this morning. And uh, we have a, uh, well, huh, what can I call it? Spectacular mystery shopping report, and uh, that's from uh, Nissan uh, 441. Uh, I think that we're going to go to Rick, who may have some YouTubes for us. I do have one interesting one here, one. Uh, from Steve Maggs, he says, electric vehicle battery fires are no more frequent than internal combustion engine fires, which is totally true. However... But, but you have to say this, uh, less than 5% of the cars on the road are electric, and uh, 95, obviously, therefore, are gasoline. So you're naturally going to have a hell of a lot more fires in combustion engine cars. Is right. he talking percentage? Or well, it's the, 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 the commonality. It's not so much that number that he's looking at here. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, it does occur the cars catch fire, yeah. especially in an accident situation. Um, you do have the vehicle fire issue. Uh, what he's bringing up is the idea that the electric vehicle fires are much more difficult to be handled by the fire departments, the oh, first yeah. responders. Yeah. And... He says a, a parking lot jammed up with EVs where one catches on fire could potentially ignite the others. Yeah, Rick, and Rick be has been extremely asked dangerous. By a lot of first responders. He speaks before of uh, you know fire groups, firemen groups, uh, police groups, first responders. When you have a electric vehicle or a hybrid, uh, you got to know what you're doing before you uh, uh, start messing around with a car. Absolutely. Uh, especially due to the fact that these systems contain such extremely high voltage and can be very dangerous to the first responders when they're at an accident scene. Uh, but he's mentioning the idea, it, do, would he feel dangerous having a level 2 charger in his garage or in a parking garage using a level 2 charger? And I say no. There's no reason to be concerned about that. The safety features that are installed in those are very well kept. It's highly unlikely you'll have any any worries with that. You just want to be sure that your your power supply in your house is sufficient to handle the additional drain on the electricity because it can be substantial, and uh, you might have to uh, have, have somebody go into your breaker box and give you a higher capacity, which that adds to the expense of the charger. Exactly. I'm, I, I'm speaking from personal experience. Ah, yep. Yeah. And, but in the case, if you are involved in an accident, that an electric vehicle is part of the accident scene, or you're witness to it, if there's any sign of fire with an electric vehicle, evacuate the area, get everyone away from the vehicle, well away, because these fires, because the battery is sealed in such a manner, it's very difficult for the fire department to get water into that battery to try to put the fires out. So it takes a long time. So get everyone as far back away from the area as possible and just let the fire department do their jobs. They're trained, they have the knowledge 
of how to handle the vehicle. And tow companies have been advised, too, that a vehicle, an electric vehicle that they're brought to an impound yard needs to be kept away from other vehicles. But for personal safety, if you see a fire with one of these vehicles, get away from it. Let it go. Thank you, Rick. There's nothing in there. It's worth your life. Very dangerous situation. 877-960-9960. Give us a call. And you can text us also at 772-497-6530. Ladies, first two female callers, $50. Give us a call. We're waiting. Back to Rick. And let's see. Uh, oh, Kyle in Pennsylvania says, I got those Carfax emails, too. It says... Earl Stewart wants to buy your car. <laughs> and it had my exact mileage and an estimated price for a trade-in offer, which was way off when I asked you guys about it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's a joke, right? Uh, no, actually, that's what Kyle said. But I think perhaps... Oh, he got a... He got a, a, a Carfax offer saying that you wanted to buy oh, their car. Yeah, well, that sort of confused me with Carfax. Okay, uh, apparently, Car I, Sue's not here, so he can answer this better than I could. Apparently, Carfax has a marketing uh, uh, division, uh, which makes me nervous, by the way, yeah. uh, because uh, we, we, ra we rave about Consumer Reports because they have no... Uh, connection with any th commercial endeavors that might prejudice their opinions on things. Carfax, we rely on them for their accuracy, and we always say, don't buy a used car without getting a Carfax report. The fact that I pay Carfax money to do marketing for me uh, makes them a little bit beholden to car dealers because they're doing this with all car dealers and they're making money from car dealers. Cars.com does the same thing. Uh, uh, car Guru does the same thing. Auto Trader does the same thing. Uh, all the uh, Edmunds does the same thing. So uh, I'm a little nervous about car, uh, uh, car facts. Uh, because of that, of that fact. So, yeah, uh, we probably did a mailer. Uh, the fact of the matter is there's a huge shortage of used cars now. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, lease cars, leasing is way down. Um, most people now, when the lease comes back in, they exercise their option. 90%, this is mind-boggling, 90% of people who are leasing cars exercise the option to purchase their own car. So this puts a hurting on car dealers, and we have a very hard time buying cars. Uh, for as long as I can remember, car dealers have always sent the same offer out. I desperately need your car. Please bring it in. In our case, we're saying we desperately need your car. Please bring it in. And we're telling the truth. But uh, why, do you, why should you believe what we say or Carfax says? Because car dealers were saying they desperately needed your car 10 years ago when they didn't need your car. It was a get, get me in the door thing so they could sell you a new car. The dealers so, cried wolf. Yeah, we cried wolf. Uh, our problem in our dealership oftentimes is that car dealers have, have beat the, the credibility so down of our profession that people don't trust any car dealers. It, you know, when Nancy and I are at a party or socializing, sometimes we don't even want to admit we're in the car business because, you know, it's just like saying I'm a lobbyist, I'm a congressman, or I'm a lawyer. I don't like you. You know, don't talk to me. So uh, it's a bad situation. Where are we? Okay. Uh, let me mention something else on a different subject entirely. I didn't realize this. I'm going to ask Rick. Uh, if this is accurate, Automotive News said that electric vehicles are harder on tires than combustion engine because they're heavier. And uh, it makes sense. So Rick is nodding his head. I won't let him start talking because I'm not finished yet. So, but, so the other thing I learned in the article is that, is that there is finally some major uh, technological advancements and breakthroughs on tires. And we talk about tire sensors all the time. Uh, they're working on tire sensors now that will not only tell you when your tire uh, is low on air, it'll also tell you if your tire is overheating, it'll tell you if your tire is low on tread, and which one. Uh, it will even tell you if you need a, 
uh, a, uh, a wheel balance or a tire uh, uh, rotation. Uh, it is really amazing. And when you stop and think about it, there's no reason why they can't do that. So now uh, you're not going to have to ha come into a car dealership or an independent sh shop every five or six months to get your tires checked. Your car's checking your tires every day. And I think that's amazing. Of course, it's going to add to the cost of the car. But, Rick, I cut you off when I said that the e -vehicles, electric vehicles wear tires out faster. Well, the tire sensors we have now. Uh, to talk about, well, will a heavier vehicle, because they have batteries, will it wear tires out faster? Yes, it will. Okay, I was right. And always, always bear in mind that cornering is one of the biggest things that wears your tires. Yeah. Uh, heavier vehicles, a lot of people find the, the right side, outer side of their tire oh. wears very quickly because the left turn is a big sweeping turn that you're taking about two to three times the speed that you can do in a right-hand turn, mm -hmm. which is a much sharper turn in most cases. So, you know, city driving, where you're turning around the block. Yeah. Slow down a little bit on those turns if you can, folks, especially those left turns. Slow it down, and you help save your tires. Yeah. Well, to me, uh, I've always considered tires uh, a, an old-fashioned thing. I never have understood yeah. why cars have to run on on tires the way they, they do. Rubber tires that wear down. Yeah, and uh, and now at least we know there is going to be a breakthrough very soon so that you won't have to check your, your alignment, you won't have to check your balance, you won't have to check the tread wear, uh, you won't have to check if there's a nail in your tire, if you have any kind of a damage to your tire. There's, there is going to be software that will be on your car and just say, hey, you better come in and get your front end aligned and uh, save a lot of money in worn out tires. Yeah, definitely. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you can take a look at Consumer Report, the February edition of uh, the uh, cars with amazing new features. Um, as Earl pointed out, you know, not only will you know, uh, y you know, which tire is uh, low on pressure, uh, uh, but you'll know which one. And there's so many other features uh, that are just amazing. Some you like, hmm, some you don't like. Um, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. We are going to go to a caller if Rick can wait a moment on the next. Okay, very good. Frank, thank you for waiting. Uh, he's calling from Jupiter Farms. Welcome to you. Good morning. It's always a pleasure listening to the show. And you know, when I have something to say to call in, the, the warm green I get is like family. You know. Thank you. Anyway, um, Frank, we're having mm -hmm. a little bit of a problem hearing you. Mm -hmm. I'll I tell you what. Does this work any better? Oh, yeah. yeah. Much better. Much better, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, we're the cell phone. Anyway, it's always a pleasure to call in the warm green I get from you guys. It's just always a very oh, heartwarming you. experience. But some of the memories, I just, with the tires, it reminded me back when I lived in Miami back in the 50s, where they would take your tires in and they would retread them, recap them. And um, that was an interesting um, saving on price for new tires until they actually, sometimes they just... What, what was that exactly? Off. That was that took place a long time ago, retreading tires. What, what they, did they, they actually do? Right? They paste the tread around the outside of the tire. Like with fuse it, fuse it onto the tire. And it stays Simple there as for, as for a while, and it falls out in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, boy. Exactly. It was like putting a glove on an old tire. Yeah. You know, it does not sound safe. But something different. And um, the other thing, um, oh, did you see, like that picture I sent in with a flathead? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it reminded me, because we had um, a flathead, a couple of flathead motors in the backyard at one time. We would jump cars. But anyway, <laughs> the other thing earlier when you spoke about key fobs, um, I have a small business, Palm Beach Metal Detectors, and I provide a service when people lose things on the beach, like the rings or what have you. I come out there and help them find it. I got a call about a month ago for a guy who lost his key fob. It was on a rental car from Enterprise down in Lauderdale, and he looked everywhere for it. And they were going to charge him $800 to replace that key fob, plus the towing down to Lauderdale. He's here on vacation, so basically he was going to lose a day of his vacation. So he called me, and I went out there with my metal detector, and 
within about five, ten minutes, we found it. He was so happy. So I understand what, what you're talking about with key fogs and mm-hmm. uh, how important they are. But uh, let's see, other than that, yeah, everything else is good. I'm enjoying life. We have, um, I, I heard the one man talking about Turtle Fest, and I was almost tempted to go there. And um, but we also have something in Jupiter Farms for the for the residents today with a band and um, barbecue from McCray. So like a big block um, party. A busy Saturday. That sounds nice. Boy, Frank, that was a great story about the key pot. Thank you for yeah, sharing. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Anyway, if people lose it, just look for some guy with a metal detector. <laughs> That'll that. ruin your trip. Okay. Your you vacation. Nice yep. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Frank. Bye-bye. Great hearing from Bye-bye. you. Um, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Now back to Rick. I think he's got some YouTubes over there. Actually, I'm looking forward to the new technology in tires where they'll do away with a pneumatic air-filled tire, and it'll be like a sponge material that absorbs the impacts of the bumps, and then the tread surface can be simply have rubber glued on like we used to do in the back in the day for new treads and re uh, 3d printed this would make tires last indefinite and you'd never have these dumps full of tires anymore it'll happen old tires it'll happen one day mm-hmm. we have any text over there still uh, let me check we do have anonymous feedback okay okay what's the latest excuse for low car inventory now well my guess is um pretty deep hole was dug um, when orders couldn't be filled and there's still most of the cars that are arriving at the dealership lots well, I don't want to say most but I'd say a significant amount that are being produced now are filling orders that were at our dealership we have over a thousand orders um, yeah it's, not, it's all relative yeah. and, and our, our inventories now are definitely much higher yeah. than they were a year ago and they're even higher than they were a year and a half or two years ago. So, yeah, literally at our dealership, literally we would have zero cars in our inventory. Now, what do we have? A hundred, hundred and ten, Stu? Um, a little right, right around a hundred, yeah. less than a hundred, but yeah. So it's getting better, but it's still short. There's no, there's no conspiracy. It's uh, uh believe me, the manufacturers are dying to get the production up. Uh, uh, do we have any callers? We do not. Okay, I want to uh, talk about something that Jonathan has uh, forwarded to us that was very interesting to me, and I, I had to bite my tongue uh, this whole time during this show because people t- tell, tell me I talk about Tesla too much, but I think this is pertinent, and this is a graphic that uh, we'll show on the screen if you're streaming us on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, and uh, it talks about the profitability of uh, Tesla. Now, uh, I'm talking about uh, Tesla based on the uh, fact that they are electric vehicles. I'm not, uh, Elon, I'm not in, in the fan club or anything like that. I'm just talking about why uh, electric vehicles are a huge factor. They're a huge factor because Tesla is huge in electric vehicles. And uh, one of the things that you guess lean manufacturers that are trying to convert over and play catch up to Tesla and to the other electric vehicle manufacturers is the fact that you're very, very thin financially. Uh, General Motors just announced they've offered buyouts to every salaried employee. I mean, that's trouble in River City. Uh, Ford is losing money. Uh, People are are spending billions of dollars, manufacturers, billions of dollars, to catch up on battery technology, electric vehicle technology. Now, the graphic that you see behind uh, on the screen, if you're streaming us, is Tesla profit margins. The bottom line is Tesla is making a ton of money every time they sell you a car. Uh, they are they are extremely profitable, and their 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 profit per car, and uh, Stu's in the business, and so uh, he'll understand this, and Nancy and Rick, uh, that Tesla makes. Nine thousand five hundred and seventy-four dollars every time they sell you a Tesla. Now, let me give you a comparison. The second biggest uh, profit is General Motors, who makes two thousand one hundred fifty dollars a car. It goes down to uh, BYD. What's BYD? Uh, 
That's uh, not, not a U.S. manufacturer. They make $1,550 a car. Toyota, and we have a Toyota dealership, Toyota only makes $1,197 on every Toyota they sell a dealer. Now, keep in mind, Elon Musk makes $9,574 on every Tesla he sells. Volkswagen only makes $973. Tesla makes 10 times that profit when they sell the car to you. They, remember, they're eliminating the middleman, okay? Hyundai, $927. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to conceive of that. Now, if you really want to feel sorry, I said Ford. Ford is losing right now $1,197 every time they sell the car. Kind of makes you wonder why. You know? <laughs> they're, they're trying to, they're, they're depleting their cash, that's what. And they're having to sell assets, they're having to borrow money. It's not a pretty picture for you Ford people. I feel sorry because we know James Farley, the CEO of Ford, and he's been there two or three years trying to turn around that Ford mess, and he hasn't done it. Uh, and then I got uh, the other two I don't even recognize. It must be a Chinese car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Xpeng, they lose $11,735. And NIO, N-I-O, that's a Chinese electric vehicle, they lose $19,141. So there's Elon up there <laughs> laughing and, and joking around and tap dancing and being silly. And, uh, what? and, and everything you say about him, uh, and some of it may be true, but the fact of the matter is he's making a ton of money, and that money he can use to reinvest. He is planning now to reinvest uh, a huge amount of money in restructuring his entire manufacturing process. He just He's building a plan in Mexico. He's changing. He's already ahead. Now he's going to make it even cheaper, and he wants to build, listen to this, if it was anybody other than Elon Musk saying this and Tesla, he wants to build 20 million Teslas a year. Mm. And you know what? He will be spending and building 20 million a year. And when he does, he'll be the world's largest auto manufacturer. So uh, I'm sorry I had to go off on the Tesla rant, but no, that's interesting. the facts are the that's facts. That's pretty interesting. I have another um, interesting story, and it's... Um, <clears throat> A little funny, but it is definitely about Tesla, and it's about the Model X. Sam's Club robbers nab, stopping to recharge Tesla. Despite an impressive acceleration and spacious cargo area, a Tesla Model X turned out to be a poor getaway vehicle for a duo accused of stealing electronics from Sam's Club store in Georgia. The suspects were caught when they stopped to recharge the electric vehicle 10 miles away in Winnet County, police told Insider last week. Witnesses spotted the two getting into the Model X with boxes of gaming consoles and electric toothbrushes and police broadcasts. And they probably couldn't uh, afford EVs the supercharger, so they had to wait about six hours, and the, the, the police were behind them. The suspects stopped at a Tesla supercharger only a few exits south of the interstate of Interstate 85. Police arrested them as... The chargers at the charger site. You know, I, I've, got, I've got a question on that subject. So, uh, Stu, maybe you know the answer. If you, uh, I don't use the supercharger I have, because I have a garage charger, so I, I haven't even used the uh, Tesla chargers on the on the highway. Uh, when you when you pull your Tesla into a Tesla charger, uh, they know who you are and they charge your charge yes. you directly. Yeah, I didn't have to do anything. Can you pay cash if you have to? I it never even occurred to me. I'm thinking of the crooks now. They they didn't own the car, right? So maybe they could have still charged up. Uh, uh, if illegally. you charge up, you're, they're going to know where you are. Uh, they're going to know where you are because the car is getting tracked by your app anyway. So yeah, you they, have to. But they could at least could charge the car up. They, they have maybe 15 minutes to charge and get the hell out of there. <laughs> this couple didn't do that. Hey, uh, we're going to go back to the phones. Bob is uh, waiting to speak to us from Lake Park. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Good morning. Is this uh, Earl Stewart on Tesla's? <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy. We were talking about you this morning. <laughs> uh, you were just waiting for me. I'm wait I was, well, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, I, I did see uh, General Motors 
uh, decided to close down one of their factories for a few weeks uh, that makes large trucks. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with parts. <clears throat> they did it because they said there was a softening of demand. Mm -hmm. And I find this to be very interesting. So, in other words, they're trying to manipulate the inventory levels that are at the dealerships. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're coming in and the dealer will tell you, well, we don't have any vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, do you have a boat, Earl? Yes. Oh, okay. Because uh, with that, what they're doing with that bridge over there where you live, I guess the only way you're going to be able to get around is by <laughs> getting off your boat. Yeah, Bob's talking about closing down the bridge that, that uh, goes across. I call it the Jupiter Inlet. They call it the Loxahatchee River. But right. uh, they're, they, they have closed it down for two and a half years. I, I had... Uh, I, I, we haven't done anything because it's not that bad because there's the, an alternate bridge available. And, but I had thought about using the boat when they said they were going to close down the Beach Road uh, Bridge, which uh, is the road to Jupiter Island. As, uh, we live on an island. They closed that bridge down. Uh, Nancy and I have to try, travel 10 or 15 miles north to the other bridge at the other end of the island. I was thinking about, about getting an amphibious car to run across the <laughs> inlet. <laughs> so, yeah. right, yeah. right now, we're just... Right now, Talk we're to just buddy. trying to get out of the driveway. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's complicated because there's so much construction that's going on in our neighborhood. So once we spend 15 or 20 minutes getting out of our neighborhood, then we have to deal with what's going on ahead of us for the next two and a half years. The answer, leave about an hour, hour and a half early. Well, I can, I can see your house. And I can see not only your house, but I can see Perry Como's house. Do you know where I am? Uh, did you, uh, Perry Como uh, put the door on our what? house when it was built. Yeah, which I house are you the, talking about? That's my own claim to fame. I've I never met I him, can, but they I tell me he put the your, door on my house. I can see your house and Perry Como's house. Do you know where I am? The, uh, his first house or his second house? You're standing on the top of the lighthouse. Yep. <laughs> there you go. You that's got it. it. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> on top of the lighthouse. Don't you remember that James Cagney movie, I'm on top of the world, Ma? <laughs> Well, I'd like to. I'd like to go on the top of the uh, the lighthouse too. Except I don't have a. They don't have an elevator, and I can't walk up the, those many stairs. So, congratulations, Bob. You're in pretty good shape. Uh, that, well, that was that was not recent, but uh, oh. in any event, I wanted to tell you there is a, a situation with the Mustangs that I find very interesting. Uh, they're coming out with the twenty four Mustang, uh, and they're going to start building them uh, next month, and they're going to be in the dealer show houses. And uh, the deals are going to happen this summer, probably sometime in June. Uh, and now you've got, now a lot of the, the dealers still have the 22s, and, and they had a short order book on the 23s. So uh, a lot of these cars are getting discounted pretty heavily because it, some of them are going to be uh, two years outdated. So I find this to be very interesting. And if you sh not locally in this area, you have to go out of the area, but there are some dealers that are taking four or five thousand dollars off of some of these cars, you know, off of off of the MSRP. Yeah, a lot, a lot of them take the four or five thousand dollars off, then they add ten thousand in the fine print. So you got to be careful well, about that. You know what? I what get, what's happened, Bob? Uh, that people don't realize. <laughs> Uh, they always talk about the dealers price gouging, and, and God knows there's enough of them doing that. Uh, what the manufacturers, they're, they're kind of like behind the, the scene. They're, they're in the shadows. The MSRP on new cars in the past two years has gone from 36000 average MSRP, from $36,513 to $47,670. Oh, so they have secretly uh, jacked the prices up more than the I average car dealer. I don't know about being a secret. Ford just announced that they're raising the price of the Broncos again. Yeah. And that's like the fourth, uh, fourth increase. But they announced it. I mean, people, if you already have the car ordered, you're okay. Yeah. But if if you go in there for something else, then it's going to be it's going to be a problem. I do have one Tesla story. I hate to talk about Tesla, but <laughs> I did I did read I did read a story where somebody that had spent a hundred thousand dollars on the Tesla, uh, and this is common. A lot of these people are extremely uh, aggravated that Tesla is going to allow uh, other cars to use their uh, fast chargers because <laughs> of the wait because of the waiting times. 
one guy says, I'm not going to stand in line behind a Kia. <laughs> I spent a hundred thousand dollars for my car. I want him to have oh be able to get God. in and get my car charged. Well, he says, "I'll sell this thing and go back to an internal combustion engine." Good. Well, if he can, good. If he can afford, the, if he can afford a hundred thousand dollars for a car, he can afford to put a charger in his garage. Right. Well, that is a you know it is a, it is a, a consideration yeah. for people. They have to have their they have to be able to get their car charged. And, uh, you know, if, if they're going to allow uh, Tesla chargers to be used for all these other electric yeah, vehicles. But, but how many high-speed chargers are going to get built in the country? I mean, how many billions are, have been allocated to that? I mean, I think hundred, like hundreds of thousands of high-speed chargers, I mean, are, are in the works right now. So yeah. I think it's yeah, not going to be an issue. But you know how the government works, though. You know, if yeah. it's a government program, you know, it could take... Who knows how long before that? Yeah, but happens. they're private contractors. The companies are, are, are doing it. They want the money. It's it's. There's still commerce going on. They just got to get it. Give them well, a check. <laughs> well, well, we can't pay. Uh, well, I don't think we're paying on bills, are we? From what I heard, well, we're we only going to pay our bills until June. We're going to find out. <laughs> you know, who's going to sign a contract with the government if you're not getting paid? That is true. I mean, That's true. Okay. Well, you guys have a great weekend and. Uh, Thanks, Bob. And, uh, and and I'll be listening to your show on the leprechaun there that's on TV that says no markups in uh, <laughs> the low end. Leprechaun. He's, his, his, his advertisement now is for St. Patrick's Day, so he's all dressed in green. So. <laughs> and Thanks don't forget so much. about Bra Don't forget about Brame and uh, Honda. They're also advertising below MSRP, so I'd be interested if you get a chance all right. to shop them at some point in time. Thank you for okay. that. Okay. They're on the list. Thank Have you a, very much. Have a great day. Great Bye. hearing from you, Bob. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, back to the recovering car dealer. Well, we, if we have any text or YouTubes or Facebooks, we got time. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and do the report. I'm looking to see if I've missed any old anonymous feedbacks because there's so much spam coming in, by the way. Yeah, there uh, is. Uh, and it's yeah, outrageous. Oh, okay. Here's one. Sorry, you thought you're going to get away from this one. Wondering if Earl has his new book out yet. No. I have heard a comment. I haven't heard a comment on the book lately. If it's not out yet, is there a projected uh, date? And that's from Roy in Denver, anonymously. You know, I, I, I apologize for that, and I feel guilty. Uh, I, I'll, get, I'll get personal for just a little, a little bit. During this whole COVID thing, um, I, uh, you know, Nancy and I both modified our lifestyle like everybody else in the world. And... Uh, when you modify your lifestyle, I, we, we stopped going out and moving around, and we stopped uh, uh, con, you know, physical contact outside our home. And we, we just got way behind on a lot of stuff. And uh, uh, right now, uh, medically speaking, uh, you know, we're, uh, you know I'm, we're still catching up with the dentists, the doctors, uh, MRIs, uh, CAT scans, uh, all the other stuff that we didn't do for three years. Uh, and uh, I know that's a lame excuse, but I promise you, uh, it's 99% finished. We just have to get uh, a few more things done. Uh, we're using a ghostwriter, uh, so that's uh, that helps. And I'm driving him crazy. He, he says, uh, yeah, "When are you going to send me this? When are you going to send me that, so we can get this book published?" So yeah. uh, we will. We will do it. I'll make a tentative promise that it'll be uh, by the end of April. You know, um, and also the, um, there is uh, the other side of uh, the flip side of the coin, and that is uh, operating a business and uh, speaking engagements and, and uh, so on and so forth. So we've really been trying uh, to play catch up. There's meetings. There's uh, I could go on and on and on, but uh, no excuses. Uh, the book is going to be published soon. That's all we can say. Okay, recovering car dealer. Okay, we'll do the mystery shopping report, and then you texters out there, okay. YouTubers, Facebookers, uh, uh, we'll probably have a, a few minutes before the show ends. So uh, get us your text and your Facebooks and YouTubes in now. Oh, yeah, so, and my people, my texters. Huh. Let's, I don't mean to admonish you, but let's get these grades in a little earlier. Last week, I, I, all the grades came in after the show was over, <laughs> so I feel bad for them, but... Uh, by the way, they gave Kia D minuses on average, but yeah. Uh, yeah, get them in early. Yeah, it's really important, folks. Um, as Stu said, um, you know, we really want to announce the the grades um, right after the mystery shopping report, and it's so important that we hear from you uh, because you make the show, and that's YouTube and that's Facebook. 
uh, uh, for the callers, you can text us at 772-497-6530. You're, you're um, a, a big part of this show, and we went out to Southern 441 Nissan. So uh, <laughs> all I can say is listen up. This is... Uh, this is going to be uh, something else, a uh, very plus. insulting, outrageous, annoying. Now back to the recovering car dealer. Okay, Southern 441 Nissan in West Palm Beach is a Terry Taylor store. Terry Taylor is kind of like the Howard Hughes of the automobile dealers. He's just, uh, you, know, you, you don't see him. He, he stays uh, much, pretty much as, as a recluse, uh, no publicity uh, when he buys a dealership he buys it secretly and he puts somebody else in to manage it but he controls all these dealerships in fact he is the largest private car dealership owner in the world Terry Taylor and um, we know a little bit about him because we knew him when he started out in business uh, many 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 years ago uh, with a Mazda dealership I think in, in Miami uh, so uh, uh, we've, we've uh, mystery shopped some of his other dealerships, and now we're getting to the Nissan. I think this is maybe the second or third time we've been in. Uh, I'll speak in the first person as if I were Agent Lightning, our renowned mystery shopper. I arrived in the morning and went to check out the new Nissan Pathfinder that was parked up front. The color caught my eye. It was... Uh, so I, I checked it out for a few minutes. It was a new 2023 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. Uh, it was a 4x4, and the sticker MSRP was 52895 Now, remember that. 52895 was the sticker price. That's a pretty high sticker. It's above average. Uh, okay. There was an addendum, of course, that added $1,973 uh, for an appearance package. And there's also a market adjustment for $4,995. If you add those together, you're talking about a round number of $7,000. So they've added $7,000 that we know about, and believe me, there's more we don't know about, uh, right there on the car. So we're, we're looking at a Nissan, Nissan Pathfinder 2023, and they want to sell it to us, to Agent Lightning, uh, for uh, $7,000 over sticker. Um, I opened their website, uh, I being Agent Lightning, on my phone, and saw they were advertising the same vehicle online for $49,192. Okay. That's a $3,703 discount off MSRP, and they wanted to sell it for $7,000 over MSRP. So basically... Uh, they, they, they've advertised this car for 49192 and they want to sell it for $10,000 over sticker price. Huh. Now, and they do sell cars like that, and people do pay. Uh, you listeners to Earl and Cars, uh, you think everybody's kind of, you know, they're not really sharp about buying cars, but you think they, you think they couldn't get uh, taken advantage? They do, trust me. They do get, people will buy these cars at ludicrous prices over MSRP and never be the wiser. Um, I'm mulling around, again, I'm back on the uh, Nissan 441 uh, lot. Uh, I waited to see if anyone would come out to greet me. No such luck, so I wandered inside. Again, I'll editorialize here. One of the reasons there's no such luck is car salespeople are shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, they don't have to work. They don't have to smile. They don't have to be courteous. They don't have to cut the price. All they got to do is be there, and they're going to take their good time about coming out and talking to customers. Because if you don't buy that Nissan Pathfinder Platinum 2023, somebody right behind you will come in and buy it. So they, they're nonchalant, sometimes even rude and That's abusive. Right. <clears throat> that car you need to think about is the car that someone else is buying the next day. Yeah, exactly. That's what the sign said. <laughs> That's right. I waited to see if anyone would come out. Okay. Standing at the front, I looked around before one of the sales managers looked up from what he was doing and said, how can I help you today? I asked if the path, Pathfinder out front was available. He replied with a questioning expression, said, let me find a salesperson for you. He left me standing there for about five minutes and returned with not one but two ladies. 
uh, introducing them as Leia and her shadow. Leia, don't you, me and my shadow? Leia and, and my shadow. Her shadow. Right. Right. They didn't give the shadow's name Lamar Cranston. Oh, you, you old guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> Only the old people will know. I don't but, know that, but I know you're referring to something obscure, so I left. Yeah, who knows what <laughs> evil lurks in the and heart of man. Shadow. The shadow does. Anyway. The shadow enough, does. Enough silly stuff. The only people left that's out from there radio. That's are the like old the, guys that's like That's from like the 40s. <laughs> they didn't give the shadow's name, but uh, she did say anything. She didn't say, nor did she say anything the entire time she was with us. Leia, who was a salesperson, asked me for my license and said, uh, something to her shadow in Spanish, and then told me they'd be right back. They returned a few minutes later with keys and plates, license plates in hand, and we all walked outside where the Pathfinder was parked. One of my first questions was about the price, as there was no window sticker. I mean, this is just so, so bush league, so stupid, so unnecessary, violating federal law, the Maroney law, I did a blog on that recently. No window sticker. You have to have, by federal law, the window sticker on all new cars. The manufacturer's window sticker, by the way, not the addendum window sticker. Um, so I, when I replied there was no window sticker, Alea said, it's in here somewhere. All our cars have them. <laughs> <laughs> After searching though through, she couldn't admit it, she couldn't find it. Well. Hey, when you're when you're going to try to sell me a car for ten thousand dollars over sticker, I can kind of understand why you don't want me to see the sticker, and I hate to you know imply that it was done on purpose. Oops. But I'm implying <laughs> that it was done on purpose. Oops. We okay. left it over there. Well, I went over all the features of the Platinum Pathfinder. Uh, she then uh, had me get into the passenger seat so she could pull the car out from the tight spot it was parked in. She continued to drive going through all the amazing options, including a heads-up display, blind spot monitors, as she drove to a secluded lot. Now, I'll, I'll say something nice about this. I mean, as a car dealer, this is the way car uh, you're supposed to demo a car. You're supposed to drive the car first and then turn the car over to the salesperson. You're not supposed to hand the, uh, the, the uh, prospect the keys. the keys and say, try it out. So she was doing the right thing when it comes to demonstrating the car. So there's, there, I, there I said something nice about Leah. Um, uh, there she, she ba uh, backed the car into a spot and offered me the, uh, oh, I, yeah, yeah, she backed the car and offered me the driver's seat saying we would go anywhere I want so I could feel just how nicely it drove, good. We went on a pleasant test drive, and then I backed the car into a spot up front before we headed into her desk. Uh, Leah gathered a bit more information from me, and then she said she'd be back shortly with a printout of the Minoni label, the manufacturer's suggested retail, and some numbers, which should have been on the car. I interrupted Leah to ask about, you wonder, I second-guessing myself here, you wonder would she have asked for the Monroney label had I not made a stink about it? I don't think so. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, I, I interrupted Leia to ask about the online price I'd seen showing her my phone that said 49192 displayed. She responded that it was ju just an online price. I mean, don't worry about just... That. I mean, it's like just an afternoon. Are you going to drive this car online? Yeah, it was just a, a no. little, you know. <laughs> showing the lowest a customer could go if they qualified for all the different discounts. <laughs> oh, it doesn't say that I mean, on the like, listing, the, though. I know, but that's like a confession. Right now. But I, and, it's and, confession. And we, we have a picture of that, and I don't see any, any disclosure of the picture. So it's just purely uh, lying. Well, it made me feel dumb because I thought it was a price, and yeah. I didn't realize it was just a demonstration of how low the customer could go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and she says, for example, military, college graduate, and a Nissan owner. Now, statistically, if you're going to advertise a car, and in order to get the price, you have to be in the army, <laughs> graduate from from uh, the college. And, and you have farmer. to have bought a Nissan. Only 5% of the market buy Nissans. And what, what, what percent of the market are in the military 
uh, and what percent of the market are college graduates. So you run away, you well, know, it's deceptive, even if they do have discounts which add up to what they claim, and they don't, I promise you. Um, anyway, she says, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. That's true. She then excused herself to go speak with her manager. About 10 minutes later, they both returned with a label and a press sheet. Top line was MSRP, 52895 But they added the whole addendum label mess, a total of $6,968. Then they added $285 in taxable fees. Those are hidden fees. And a 999 dealer fee, that's a hidden fee, and, a, and a, obviously a, a junk fee. Uh, uh, their government fees were even too hefty, and we think, uh, Stu and I both think, that they're using electronic filing fees and, and right. tag agency fee names for junk hidden fees and uh, claiming that they're uh, not That's taxable. The, that yeah. is like, that takes it to the yeah. true definition of hidden fee because now they're actually, they're not even labeling it on the line. They're just yeah. lumping it in the legitimate line, hmm. having so, a sum there. So my real price was 61147 before tax and tag. $8,250 over MSRP, a huge amount, higher than probably most Nissan dealers are charging and uh, definitely higher than most car dealers are charging. Uh, they're asking the price because every now and then a gullible person comes in. I mean, I'm not calling these people stupid. I'm just saying, you know, we, we live our lives. We buy a car every four, five, six, seven, ten years maybe. Out of sight, out of mind. You don't think about cars, advertising, MSRP. You're not on top of things. You don't listen to Earl on cars. And you say, hey, I need a car. And you hop in the car, and you go to the car dealership, and, you know, you're, you're dead meat. You're, you're, you're a, a, a big target. You're an easy target. And a lamb do... in the lion's den. Exactly, yeah. I asked about all the extra charges, and she said all their vehicles have those paid by the customers. That's a flat lie. Uh, I had to, uh, I had to go over all the fees and write down what they were. Then I asked if I could keep the sheet. <laughs> oh boy! You know what they're going to say, right? She said, "Absolutely not." I mean, like, uh, you, uh, what did you ask me to do? You want me to? Uh, Can I have your wallet? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to let you take a picture. I could get in trouble for this. Outrageous. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is all true stuff, folks. She then asked me what I thought. Uh, she had asked me what I thought. I said that I wasn't aware they were still charging markups on vehicles along, in addition to, appearance packages. She replied that there was nothing she could do about the appearance packages. Like, what do you want me to do about it? I, mean, you know, I, I just work here. I can do nothing. As they come on all vehicles, I mentioned the window tent paint protection edge guards would cost me much less than what they're charging on this addendum sticker, and I could install it myself, but it didn't matter. She asked me, you know, okay, now we're, now we're getting back to the to the, the old school, uh, 20th century, early 20th century. Yeah, <laughs> old may, may, fashioned. maybe 19th century, a we're, couple of centuries ago. Yeah, to, to the game. We're, we're back to the game. What price I would need to be at today to make a deal? What price? Give me a number. I replied that we were nowhere near where I needed to be, so it seemed pointless. Leah asked me to give her my signature. <laughs> They're looking for commitment. See, that's uh, that, that's the standard classic car dealer way. Get a commitment from the customer. Uh, well, he didn't have any cash. Get his watch. So, I, I'm serious. Sales manager says, if they don't have any cash, bring me his wristwatch. Uh, or, or bring me the lady's purse. I don't know. That's, that, that is the standard old school way to sell a car. So she wants my signature that said that if she could get the price down to $60,000, I would buy it. And, and, and uh, where am I? Oh, I had I her sign saying, on the line at the bottom. I had me sheet. sign on the line at the bottom of the sheet. She then left again to speak with her sales manager. And that's pressure, folks. That's high pressure. About five minutes later, the three of them returned. Okay, now I'm really outnumbered. Uh, 
Julio, the sales manager, was quite aggressive, pressing me to make a decision on what my husband would agree to regarding the price. I said he would never agree to pay this much over MSRP and, and asked for Julio's, I asked for Julio's best offer. I think it's Julio. And Julio, oh Julio, okay. Um, he, he, he told me that he was in a tough spot because he could call corporate, <laughs> he, he couldn't call corporate without me agreeing to a signed price. <laughs> I mean, uh, even the sales manager has got to go to. He's got to call corporate. Maybe corporate's got to call the president of the United States. I'm not sure. But you, you, it's, it's, the, it's the blame game. Uh, you, you want to uh, identify, affiliate yourself as the friend of the customer, and you're going to have to go after that bad person that is asking these extraordinarily high prices. I'm on your side. Let me work with you to get uh, the manager or corporate or the president of the United States to come down on the price. So that way, you're a team with the customer. That's the old school way. I replied, obviously, you're not wanting to turn my business here today. There's no reason you can't give me a solid best price scenario. Julio then said, uh, sit down because you're going to be laughing so hard. You're going to start crying here. Julio then said, my word is as good as a written piece of paper. <laughs> my word. Julio's word is, is as good Strong as, as a written piece of paper. I responded, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. I guess we're done here. And I stood up and I walked away. So there it was, folks. It's, it's, uh, I think you... Uh, I, There's a little more. Oh, yeah, there's one more. Here we yeah. go. I thought I was through here. He said he would. He said he could do sixty-one thousand, and write it at the bottom of the paper, but refused to let me take a picture of it. <laughs> My word's good, but I don't want any evidence. <laughs> My word's better than a piece of paper, but I don't want any evidence. I think I shocked him because he stood up, stood up speechless and, tell, and stumbled over his words, trying to ask me for my email. He then said he would email me, saying that he would get the price down to 61000 out the door. I replied, no, thank you. Have a great day, and I left. <laughs> so anyway, uh, here's, a, here's a picture of... Uh, the uh, internet price forty nine thousand, right. and it, it says price. One, yeah, it doesn't say example of the yeah. lowest one could hypothetically no. go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it, this is just—it's illegal. You can't advertise a car for more than the selling price, and they did in spades. I mean, they were thousands and thousands of dollars above the advertised price. I mean, it's—I don't even call it bait and switch. I mean, a bait and switch, you you advertise a price on one car, and then you switch them to another car, which is lower cost and therefore a lower price. But when the same car you advertise, and you admit you have it in stock, and you admit that's your advertisement, and they say it's only good if you're a fireman and, 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 and the commandos, uh, you're a Green Beret, and uh, what else? You're a you, farmer, yeah. and, and you also Scott. own a Nissan. Exactly. So uh, I, there we are. I can't. Uh, a rough, rough report. Let's see what the audience has to say. Um, Stu? <laughs> They're not list. They're not coming in yet. Let me double check Facebook. Rick? Uh, we have quite a few here. Um, Johnny Z. Fraid. Oh, oh, Tim Gilliland. We'll start with Got to Get the Top. No window sticker, it's not bad business, it's illegal, I'm out. Johnny Z. Fraidly, F minus. Maybe Southern 441 should merge with Napleton, that way they can <laughs> double the MSRP. Rocky Blockatiel, they deserve an F for fraud. Brian said let go, false advertisement once again, F, and a big thumbs down. Mark Smith, I give him a solid F. Over here we have Kyle in Pennsylvania. I can almost give my F grade to Southern 441 Nissan before the report. They're advertising MSRP and they have a do dealer fee, dock fee, probably dumb accessories. I actually feel bad for the salespeople that have been trained in this way. Of course, they have billboards on 95 advertising not to pay over MSRP. Yeah. Casey, I wanted to be early on my grade. I give an F. Kirk at West By God, Virginia, Southern 441 Nissan, seriously, no window sticker? Watch this magic sales trick 
and in no time will my fingers leave my hands. Solid F minus. T Cash, F minus. Are even Subaru dealers scummy in Florida? <laughs> Mine was great in Hanover, Hanover, Massachusetts. 2K under MSRP. Good deal, T Cash. Thank you, Rick. Uh, my grade is going to be an F, and because it, it just exceeds all, all bounds of uh, uh, of decency. Human it's, decency. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, F it, for it, me it, as well. By the way. Oh, thank you. F for Rick, and we are out of time, Earl. F. Stu. F. F. You heard it. F. Oh. I hardly ever give an F, folks. Okay. But I gave an F. Okay. Uh, we're going to take and uh, we're going to thank everyone for tuning in uh, to Earl Stewart on cars. Uh, Stu may have um, a grade for us. I'm not sure. No? Oh, I gave that. No, I gave no, I mean that. The no, nothing's come no. in. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Earl Stewart on cars. We'll be right back here next week. Have a great weekend. Right back here at 8 a.m.